Alright guys, so today I will show you a new Nexus config tutorial. But since config tutorials usually tend to be longer videos, I will use an artificial voice for this video. That allows me to save a lot of time and I don't have to scratch specific video parts to cut down the video duration. So maybe let me know how you like the voice or if I should do some adjustments to it. Today I will show you my Warzone 2 configuration for Zim Nexus. As always, the shown configuration will work for all supported Zim consoles, as well as the PC. Next to that, I will present you a smart action that acts as another hidden recoil perk. What I will also show you is a setup for vehicles, drones, and the parachute, so you can easier control those with your Nexus. Outside of these two tricks, the general configuration setup is identical to my recent Modern Warfare 2 video. This is due to the aim mechanic being the same in Warzone 2, and Modern Warfare 2. So the configuration values will be the same. Because of that, I will only briefly go over the general configuration values. If you would like to hear an in-depth explanation on each configuration value, then you can always just check out my Modern Warfare 2 configuration video. This allows me to spend less time on the fundamentals, and more time on the actual additions to this configuration, such as the recoil perk. First let's start with the in-game settings. The required in-game settings for Warzone 2 can be looked up by pressing the wrench button in the bottom right corner of your configuration picture. Press the yes button, and you will be forwarded to the Zim website. Please do not use any other settings, or else the quality of your stick and motion aiming will start to suffer. Settings that aren't listed here, can of course be customized to your personal preference. Next let's take care of the hip and ADS configuration. As I said previously, the setup is identical to my Modern Warfare 2 tutorial. I am using the expert mode for this configuration, which you can activate at the very bottom. My configuration color is set to red, so my Nexus will show a red LED light, when this configuration is active. This will become relevant later on. In the advanced settings under the configuration light, I have turned off the rumble notification. And at the bottom, you can see that I have chosen the custom engage option. This allows me to later specify my own buttons, with which I can activate motion aiming. Next let's swipe one time to the right, to adjust the hip settings. My preferred motion sensitivity is 125. The stick and motion sensitivity are the only two values that you should not copy. Instead I recommend you to find your own sensitivity that you feel comfortable with. The Warzone 2 Zim profile supports universal sensitivity. So if you already found your preferred sensitivity in a different game, then use the same value. Your sensitivity will then be the same as in your other game, unless it doesn't support universal sensitivity yet. For smoothing, I prefer to use the following custom values. They provide a better aim assist experience in Warzone 2. At the bottom, you can now adjust your stick sensitivity. I am using a value of 64 and 45. Again, please use your own preferred sensitivity here. My configuration tutorial works with all stick sensitivities. In the advanced settings of the stick sensitivity I have chosen the native stick behavior. If you use custom stick curves in other game configurations, then I recommend to use the same curve here as well. Next, it is time to adjust the aim down sight settings. So swipe one more time to the right, to enter the ADS menu. I have already deactivated the shared aim settings at the very bottom. That allows us to use independent settings from the hip configuration. My preferred motion sensitivity in the aim down sights mode is 95. As for the smoothing, I recommend to use the same settings as before. And for the stick sensitivity, I prefer a slightly slower turn speed than in the hip configuration. 50 and 35 are my ideal sensitivities here. Just like in the previous configuration, you should use sensitivity values that you feel comfortable with. Below the sensitivity values, you can expand the advanced options again. I will stick with the native curve for the same reasons as in the hip configuration. If you prefer to use a stick curve though, then you can of course do that too. At the top, you can now expand the advanced settings to take care of your delay values. When you press the ADS button, each weapon in Warzone 2 will slightly delay the transition between the hip and aim down sights mechanic. 
If the delay value doesn't match the transition time of your weapon, then this can cause a short sensitivity spike, while switching between the hip and aim down sights mode. So your sticks or motion aiming sensitivity will be very high for a short moment. The default value of 224 is the average across all weapons in this game. This value will work quite well for most weapons. However, if you have chosen to use weapons which have a small sensitivity spike, then I recommend to adjust this value. For heavy weapons such as machine guns or sniper rifles, you will usually need values above 224. And for very light weapons, for example submachine guns, you must use lower values. I will keep the value at 224, because I mainly play with assault rifles. At last, let's configure the button bindings, so swipe one more time to the right. Here we must make quite a few adjustments. Most of my bindings that you can see right now are the default ones. Let me scroll up again, to handle the motion activation. First I must delete the right and left trigger binding, they will otherwise interfere with my motion activation. My plan is to activate motion with both triggers, so these two analog trigger bindings will otherwise cause issues. Next, I will create a new right trigger position binding. I can do that at the bottom of the button binding list. When I click on the plus button, I can select the right trigger position. I will now open the Smart Action Manager, and assign the Motion Engage action to it. After that, I will move the trigger slider at the top, to 15%. When I now press my right trigger beyond 15%, my Nexus will activate Motion. I have not chosen 0%, because this can cause a crosshair shake when starting to press the trigger. The controller will slightly move when you start to press the trigger, and that will make your crosshair shake a little bit. So by activating motion at a trigger press distance of 15%, you will avoid this issue, since the controller shake has already happened. Since we have deleted the right trigger binding for the fire action, let's add it again. For that I will add a second right trigger position binding. This one will handle the shooting. At the bottom, I will select the right trigger action, and then move the slider at the top to the 90% mark. This will make my weapon shoot, when I press the right trigger beyond 90%. The idea behind this setup is that motion will already be active when I am about to shoot. This also gives me full control over the motion activation. I can just lightly press the right trigger, which will only activate motion aiming, or I can fully press the trigger, to start shooting as well. For the left trigger, which handles the aim down sights mode, I will do it the other way around. Here I prefer to first go into the aim down sights mode, and then add motion on top, by fully pressing the left trigger. That allows me to hold sniping angles for longer durations, without motion interfering with my aiming. And once I found a target, I can fully press the left trigger, to place my crosshair onto the target by using motion aiming. To realize that, I will add a new left trigger position binding at the bottom of my button list. The setup will be a hair trigger, so I will select the left trigger binding, and move the slider at the top to 1%. So when I just slightly press the left trigger, the nexus will directly start to zoom in with the scope. Next, I can close this menu, and add another button binding. Again it will be a left trigger position binding, but this time, I will open the Smart Action Manager. I will now bind the Engage Motion action to it. And at the top, I will move the slider to the 90% mark. The result of this is, that I can go into the ADS mode by slightly pressing my left trigger, and when I want to add motion on top, I just fully press my controller trigger. So any left trigger press that goes up to 90% will activate the ADS mode, and any press beyond that, will add motion on top. In total I have now two options to activate motion. The first one is via the left trigger, and the second one is through the right trigger. Now in the next topic I want to show you a smart action that will act as another recoil perk of your weapon. The idea is that it will slightly reduce the recoil of all weapons. So similar to an invisible weapon attachment that reduces the recoil. The benefit of this is that the recoil reduction will work for all weapons, and not just for one. Since Warzone has a lot of different weapons, it is not possible to use one anti-recoil setup that perfectly removes the recoil of all weapons. For some weapons the anti-recoil will be too high then, and for others it will not be sufficient. 
To avoid that, we will use an anti-recoil setup that just slightly reduces the recoil. As a result it can be used with all weapons. To do that, add another button binding by clicking on the plus button at the bottom of your binding list. Pick the right trigger position binding. At the top, you must now set the percentage to 90%. We want the anti-recoil to activate at the same time as we shoot our weapon. And since we have bound shooting to 90%, we will set this anti-recoil binding to 90% as well. Next, open the Smart Action Manager at the bottom. Once that is done, deactivate the randomization in the top right corner. After that, set this Smart Action to ADS only. This will make sure our recoil setup is only active in the aim down sights mode. At last let's set up the anti-recoil. Add an aim magnitude, angle and weight action to your smart action timeline. First set the weight action to infinite. The angle can stay at 180 degrees. And the magnitude will now determine how strong the anti-recoil effect will be. The percentage you use is fully up to you. I mostly play with moderate recoil weapons, so I will set my percentage to 0.9%. If you regularly use weapons with stronger recoil, use a percentage of above 1. The higher the percentage, the stronger the anti-recoil effect will be. Do not go too high though, or else the recoil effect will be too strong for a lot of weapons. Once that is done, you can close this binding menu. In the last chapter, I want to show you how to handle drones, vehicles and the parachute. As you probably already noticed, the turn speed is fairly slow when using these items. To solve that, we will create a configuration chain. First go back to the configuration color option. To create an effective chain, rename this configuration a little bit. I will change its name to Warzone 2, so I will delete the Call of Duty part. Next click the copy button at the very bottom. Once that is done, press the save button in the top left, and exit this configuration. We will now create a second configuration, that will be chained to our first one. While I create a new configuration in the background, here is the concept of what we will do. Our first configuration will handle normal gameplay. We will use it most of the time. And when we are in the parachute, a vehicle, or a drone, we will click one of our controller back buttons, and Zim Nexus will switch into our second configuration. That one will heavily increase the turn speed for the sticks and motion aiming. And once we want to go back into our normal configuration, because we left the vehicle, or cut off the parachute, we will click the same back button again. Zim Nexus will then switch back into our normal configuration. To chain two configurations, we must first identify their configuration slot numbers. To do that, go into the top right options, and then click on Manage Configurations. You will now see all of your Nexus configurations. Count from the top down to your two Warzone configurations. So configuration slot 1 is the highest one, 2 is right below it, then comes 3 and so on. When I count my configurations, and I have a lot, then my normal Warzone configuration is in slot 21, and my second Warzone configuration in slot 22. Your numbers might be different, so make sure to memorize them. Let's leave this menu, and open the editing menu of our second Warzone configuration. First off, activate the Expert Mode at the very bottom. This will give us all the additional settings again. At the top, expand the Advanced Settings now. Press the Paste button to insert your normal Warzone configuration. Your first and second Warzone configuration are now identical. To differentiate them, I will now rename the configuration to Warzone 2 Turning. So my first configuration is named Warzone 2, and the second one is called Warzone 2 Turning. I will also change the configuration color to green. Next, let's go into the hip configuration, so we can increase the sensitivities. I will increase my motion sensitivity by 4 times, which is 500. That will make it easier to use motion aiming in the parachute, or vehicles. Next I will set both stick sensitivities to 100. This ensures that I can turn with the highest possible turn speed that the game has to offer. 
Once that is done, you can swipe into your ADS configuration. Here we must not make any adjustments, as the ADS mode is not important for the parachute or most vehicles. If you want to, you can raise the sensitivities here too though. Next let's handle the chaining. Go into the button bindings and scroll all the way to the bottom again. To switch between my first and second warzone configuration, I will use the bottom left back button. This button is currently bound to square. Let's open it, and go into the Smart Action Manager. First I will delete the square button. Once that is done, I will change the activation method at the top to press. If you still recall my configuration slots, then you know that my normal Warzone configuration was in slot 21. So what I will do now is to add a configuration slot switcher. You can find it in the advanced settings at the bottom of your Smart Action Manager. Pick the configuration switcher, and use the slider at the top to change the configuration number. My normal Warzone configuration is in slot 21, so I must change the number to 21. If your configuration is in a different slot, then use the corresponding number for it. Once that is done, you can exit this menu and press the Save button in the top left. Leave this configuration menu, and load your normal Warzone 2 configuration again. We must now add the chaining to the original configuration as well. When you have loaded your original configuration, go into its editing menu and switch into the button bindings. We will now do the same adjustments that we just did, but with a different slot number. This time we will use the slot number of our second Warzone configuration. So let's open the bottom left back button menu again. I will remove the square binding, change the activation method at the top, and add a configuration switcher again. By using the slot number of our second configuration, we have successfully created a configuration chain. Pressing the back button will switch into the other configuration, and pressing it again into the first one. To finish this setup, I must therefore now only change the slot number at the top to 22. This is the configuration slot that my second Warzone configuration is in. After that, I can save my progress, and leave this configuration menu. When I am in the Nexus dashboard, I can now press my left back button, and Nexus will switch the configuration. And when I press it a second time, I am back in the original one. I can do this as often as I want to. So when I am using a vehicle, or the parachute, I must just click my back button to go into the correct configuration. And once I leave the vehicle, or cut off the parachute, I will press the button again to be back in my normal configuration. Here you can see an example video. When I am in my normal configuration, and peg the stick to the side, the turn speed in the parachute is quite slow. And the moment I press my switch button, you can see how much faster it becomes. This is quite an improvement in my opinion. I will press the button again, to show you the normal speed a second time. Now before I close this video, you can of course find the copy and paste code for the two configurations in the video description. Just make sure that you change the configuration slot numbers, as your numbers will probably be different to mine. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button or maybe even subscribe to this channel to not miss out on any of the upcoming videos. Also, contrary to popular belief, this channel is not an official Zim channel. I run this channel in my free time to bring you guys the latest Zim news and tricks. So if you want to support what I do, then maybe consider to join the YouTube channel membership. Channel members usually get around 1-4 to four weeks of early access to all new videos. Plus we also have a nice little discord to discuss Zim settings and other stuff. But that's about it for this video guys. Thanks for watching and I will maybe see you in the next one.